everybody, it's time to claw shot our way up to the next part of Twilight Princess with part 44. We're going flying, and what the fuck? It's finally time to do I, the last... I don't want that thing coming with us. It's important for a story, don't you know? I don't care. It's, it's weird. I don't like it. Okako does have a really disturbing <laughs> design to her, I shit you not. Her and her little I, baby. I her, think... her little baby's just her head, but just with wings. It's like, what the hell? And realize this is supposed to be the original people that Link comes from if you were to play Skyward Sword. Yeah, if you want to go off uh, the freaking timeline. Suppose, uh, the way I see it, Skyward Sword is actually the beginning of everything. Because it's where the Master Sword was finally made. It's weird. This freaking race of birds, you know, talking screams, I tell ya. <laughs> Bloody screams. <laughs> it's like, calm down, dudes. So yeah, we're in our last... Well, technically, our last temple... For the pure, for the piece of uh, the mirror of twilight, City in the sky, which is probably my favorite out of all the uh, dungeons you go to when you're going to get the uh, pieces of the mirror. I don't know. It's just aesthetically, I really do love this place, and because you know, since it is in the sky, you know, bottomless pits are a plenty in this area, so you know, it's easy which to. Which is surprising, since uh, you would think that. We could just teleport our way back up there with Midna's help once we got there. That cannon had to be very powerful enough to shoot Link into the sky. In fact, you know what? It, it, being how powerful it is, he should have caught fire when he got shot out of it. Like, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Every bone in his body should be broken. He's just lucky that there was a freaking water puddle at the very entrance of the area. Convenience, my name is Zelda, Twilight Princess. Hey, look at this, a convenience store. Yep, because uh, getting back is quite a pain. They at least put this convenience store in here so you could refill on potions, uh, lantern oil, bombs. You know, you want it, it's yours, my friend, as long as you have enough rupees. But, anywho, you have to go... I want my magic armor, Ethan. I want my magic armor. I want a reason to burn through my all my fucking rupees. Magic armor is such a waste of time. It is, but it still looks pretty nice and makes me feel accomplished. Like, yeah, I did something. Probably yeah. wasn't worth it, but I did it. Yeah, that's the only thing. Like, I do <laughs> like the design of the magic armor, but in the end, you know, I don't even think it's that accomplishing getting the thing. It's it's a really tedious side quest just to get it. That's why I find all the bugs. I don't it's not that you have to find all the bugs, it's just that the fact that you have to invest a lot of money into repairing a bridge and then doing stuff for Mallow and whatnot. I mean the I think the only thing that would probably be worth it is to see um, Mallow's Mart, you know, fully realized in uh, Hyrule Castle. Especially the song that plays during that uh, during the Mart. I swear to god, if you ever look up Mallow Mallow's Mart on YouTube, the, of the official soundtrack, I swear to God, the song sounds like they say "Let's say fuck," "Let's say fuck," blah blah blah, blah, blah "Let's say fuck." <laughs> it sounds like that. <laughs> the lyrics sound like that. "Let's say fuck," "Let's say fuck." <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> I know Malo's but it's in Japanese, right? I don't know if it's in Japanese or Hylian or something. I don't know. It sounds like they say "Let's say fuck." Just one of these sides, just go on YouTube and just listen to that song of the official soundtrack. I swear, it sounds like they're saying that. So because so these this... fucking little bird people have now replaced the chickens. Well, for now, yeah. Because, like I said, the city in the sky is very bondless heavy, so we are going to be using the Okos to our advantage. They're pretty much going to be our Kukos of this dungeon. I kind of like... Are they on the walls? Yeah, I don't know how they defy gravity. It's very interesting how they can do that. Or maybe they claw it so hard that they can go through steel. Or 
whatever this place is made out of. So yeah, if you probably notice on the floor, you're going to be countering some blue tiles. Those blue tiles are pretty much the ones that are going to be collapsible if you go on them. But at this point in time, if you have all the wet, all the skills like I do, a lot of these enemies inside this uh, dungeon is not going to give you any trouble whatsoever. Especially, like, I think those guys, um, there's a lot of Lizalfos in here, so using the Shield Bash ability and using the Helm Split uh, skill is a really good uh, way to rack in some damage. But you should be good at this point. Because right now, what we're trying you know, to do... I really think you should have been able to fight, like, Stafos Link, like, fucking Ganon summons him. <clears throat> or hell, have, uh, badass badass. have all Stafos Link uh, be an ally. Like a summoning ally. That wouldn't be cool. No. No. No, no. No. Stafos Link isn't here. He's dead. <laughs> He's supposed to be an undead evil creature because he's a Stalfos. Oh, he's not really evil. He's teaching us his ways. Because most Stalfos, if they come across you, oh, Part hey, time. look, something to die. He was on your side for part-time job. You needed the money. We didn't even pay him. Ganon what? doesn't pay him enough. Yeah, well, we didn't even pay him either. We pretty much got free lessons. So you know it can be that evil to no, give you free him lessons. By Yeah. Squats. You must do squats. Squats, 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 squats. Teabag the ground. Teabag it. I think, if I recall, City in the Sky is one of the only dungeons that tries to take full advantage of all the items that you got in the previous uh, areas. Because I know, because. Oh, fly, off the edge, fly off the edge, fly off the edge. Damn it! Uh, even so, dude, I have, like, the iron boots. Because that's what you want to do. Your best friend in this game, or at least in this uh, dungeon, will be the iron boots. And then later, when we get our second claw shot, and then we can be Spider Link. Spider Link. Spider Link. Tries to be a fucking spider, man. <clears throat> Tries to be a spider wannabe. <laughs> Danny Sing. From a thread. No, he can't. He's a fucking idiot. Look out. He is the spider link. Yeah, but uh, getting the double claw shot in here was probably what still to this day one of my favorite moments in Zelda. I love the double claw shot. I wish something like that was more used in this game. It gets its full advantage in this dungeon, you know, going out. <laughs> the fucking fairy doesn't know what to do. That's because I'm just wiggly around and everything like that. Because yeah, a lot of the times you really do You're need jerking it right now. You really need to like press down on the uh, spinner a lot just to activate any of these bridges or whatnot. But as yeah, for well, this, the way I see is my favorite part is just the parts where you're doing squats to make the thing spin. <laughs> this is where you. Final Fantasy 7 and Link The uh, Legend of Zelda meets <laughs> doing squats. If that's the case, then where's Link's Popeye arms? He doesn't need them. He's got fucking Popeye legs. <laughs> He's already got his legs well toned and great. But pretty much as, well, as much as what we're doing in this dungeon is that the first area I got into after leaving is the area where all those floating panels are. But the thing is, we got to change the uh, the wind currents in this whole dungeon if we're going to get to where the boss is. The boss being a dragon and probably one of my favorite bosses of the game. Oh my god, it's a dragon. Hey, it's not it's a dragon. Hey, I could recall like maybe two, three Zelda games where you actually generally fight a dragon, to be honest. Ocarina, no, uh, Ocarina of Time, Fire Dragon. Yeah, Ocarina of Time in the Fire Temple. Um, the weird dragon unicorn from the original uh, Legend of Zelda game. This one, and 
I think that's about it. I can't recall any other dragons unless... No, 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 wait. Uh, I remember Oracle Seasons, the uh, the final boss, Onyx. He turns into some sort of dragon hybrid. Well, geez, you didn't have to be a dick about it. I just created that bridge. Nah, nah, he really needed to be a dick about it. Yeah, I do find it cool that the guy purposely screws with you over your journey. and Not like it's going to stop you or anything like that, but... It, it's, it's very interesting. I always like um, when something like uh, like the person or the boss in some sort of games whatnot you're trying to deal with, they purposely try to screw you over. I mean, it's not a lot of depth when you think about it, but I don't know. It's just small touches like that I really do enjoy. Because we ain't going to be going back to that area until we get the second claw shot. Because there's these, like, these little, like, nest-looking uh, creatures that fly about. They almost kind of look like P-hats of traditional Zelda enemies. And you pretty much use those... Hats. Yeah, I have no idea why they call them P-hats. That's why we always call them pineapple hats. I, uh... I don't remember that we called anything like that. Probably because I haven't played any of the, like, previous ones before Ocarina of Time. Well, even the, even the P-Hats were in Ocarina of Time. Do you ever recall that one big creature in Hyrule Field that got out of the ground and started chasing you at these, like, razor-sharp spinners on oh, its bottom? Oh, that fucking nightmare. Yeah, that's a P-Hat. Oh. I just called it a flying fucking pineapple. <laughs> that's what I say, you know, pineapple hats. The P stands that's for why pineapple. I don't like, you know? uh... It's pretty much the reason why I don't like fucking pineapples. <laughs> that thing traumatizing in Ocarina of Time... And now you can understand why I can never put pineapple on my pizza ever again. <laughs> well, one, I just don't like the taste of pineapple. And two, even if I did it at one point, that fucking thing scared me away from it. I do it! Pineapples are trying to kill me! Yeah, but those... That's pretty much what the pea hats are. Originally, in the older games, they were just little small creatures. But then I saw the one on Ocarina of Time, like, holy crap, this thing's huge! And the one in, I think, Majora's Mask is even bigger. And that one you kill because you get a piece of heart out of it. And unfortunately, they brought back these stupid armor creatures from uh, Lake Bed Temple. I mean, granted, you have to claw shot so you can remove their armor. But, I don't know. Just small nuisance. Don't like them regardless. But right now, at this point, why we're on this side of the um, the city and sky is because we're gonna. This I think this is the section of the uh, area where you get the second claw shot because you're gonna be using it a lot. I don't know. What do you think about the city and sky? From what do you recall? Honestly, I don't really recall much of it. The one I liked the most was the going through the Shadow Realm or whatever. So, um, you saying that uh, one of your favorite? Oh, that was stupid. <laughs> Anywho, what I was saying is like so one of the, your favorite um, dungeons of the area, or at least of the game, was um, the Palace of Twilight. Then the desert. The either the desert or the ba bowels of twilight I like That's the where my favorites lie I like the Arbor's ground for its aesthetics alone it definitely has a creepy aesthetic which I really do enjoy just knowing that the fact that you're going through a prison that used to be home to a lot of dead people and monsters just you know I think that game was I think that uh Temple was really trying to play off a little bit of the Shadow Temple feelings, but not truly being Shadow Temple, you know? Because even the Shadow Temple to this day is still, you know... I don't know how that game got away with being rated E for everyone. <laughs> Some of that shit that thing be... was pretty fucking dark. It needed to be PG, at least. So, what, rated T? Yeah, just like this game. This is the only Zelda game that I can recall that actually gets the rated T 
Because every other Zelda game after this is either E or E10. I'm trying to remember what Breath of the Wild's rating is. I think Breath of the Wild was E10. What game that really needed to be rated T was Bajora's Mask, because that game is complete, it's full on depressing. I just feel like we're just watching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. You found yet a fucking another one. Yeah, well, like I said, you know, with the uh, exception of treasure chests, fine. That's okay. But when you pick those things off the ground after coming back from a save point, uh, it's like that, that point, that's just completely unnecessary. What else is new? We got those worms returning back from the uh, first dungeon of the of the game, and they're just as annoying here because they're pretty much on the pathways that you need to take. Once again, you know, just like before, they show their heads. So all you need to do is just use the gale boomerang, and you can easily just knock them off. Hey, look, some Lizophos. Time to kill them. Lizophos. Yep, Lizophos. Bye bye. The replacements for the Stalfos. Well, there's Stalfos, Lizalfos, and then there's the Wolfos. Yeah, not very inventive when it comes to their names, but at least you can remember them at least as the Lizard, the Skeleton, and the Wolf. The bitch, the asshole, and the fucker who keeps killing me, alright. <laughs> These are the Wolfos, you know, probably highly skilled warriors. Not very bright, considering the fact that all I just need to do is just knock them off. <laughs> You know what, Steven? I think this battle place we picked is a pretty stupid idea. I'm pretty sure we should have just fought him outside with the wind, like made some barricades, making something you can never get past. Or, or brought a gun. Maybe that would have helped. So pretty much with these, uh, these geysers, the only way for you to ride them, because if you, earlier I got pushed by them and just died or fell to my death. But you need to use the Okos in order for you to even ride them. Don't know why, because, you know, judging how big you are compared to those things, you know, I'm pretty sure you weigh that down way faster than you would. But whatever, it's a video game. Get your ass over here. I ain't done with you yet. Fuckers need to uh, do what you're told. Do what you're told Fly. or become a delicious Cajun dinner. I don't know what's more annoying, these guys is crowing, or they actually cuckoos crowing. I mean, the cuckoos actually sound like chickens, but these guys sound like a bunch of gurgote screams. And through a majority of the dungeon, until we get the double claw shot, we are using these guys to the fullest advantage. Are we? Are we really? Uh, we are. It's the only way for us to even be able to get through this, uh... <laughs> it would be some shit, because if these guys weren't here in the City of the Sky, we'd be totally fucked. We wouldn't be able to get the last piece of the Mirror of Twilight if these guys weren't here. Well, fine. Not like I wanted to do... uh, run around and kill things anyway. <laughs> Damn it, missed. You think these guys would probably taste like chicken if you do eat them? Uh, you know what? Yeah, I want to fucking eat them. Let's find out. <laughs> so as I said earlier, if like you don't do as I told you, you're gonna become a Cajun fried dinner. <laughs> I, I want, I want to actually find out now. I want to know what these guys taste like. Yeah, and just because they're so weird, they probably taste something like you never probably taste like something that tastes like chicken is supposed to taste like goat or something. I honestly would not know. I don't think I've ever had goat. I have. You know, Indian restaurants and whatnot. It's not bad. No way, I think I have. I had No, I've had lamb. I've had that, but... Uh... I still haven't had lamb yet, only because I know that my mother is allergic to lamb. So I'm just not too sure if I am as well, too. 
But that's still something I have to try, though. Hmm. I, I have to look into this. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I gotta find a way to get you some lamb. <laughs> Next time I come down, you're having lamb. Alright, as long as it just doesn't kill me, that's all that matters. Well, if you go to the doctor, they should be able to do a test to find out what you're allergic to. True. But it's been a while, so I had a physical. Then it's time to get physical, physical as we fly. Physical, physical, fuck you, bird. Yeah, you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful of this funnel because these strong winds will push you out of the area, and you will fall to your death. Problem is, you need to use them in order for you to. Like, look, you see, it's funny because, like, you see these guys, you know, fly perfectly fine. I mean, yes, we are, like, hundreds of pounds weighing on top of them, but these guys, you know, fly so easily. You think these guys would be, like, the equivalent of any flightless bird, you know? Annoying, crows a lot, and it's just not very useful, except in your belly. Yep. This is where chicken breasts come from. Well, considering the fact that these things le have legitimate breasts? Yeah! <laughs> it's almost borderline creepy. And if I recall, this should be the door that leads into the mini boss with the double claw shot, but we will find out next time in part 45.